Hey class, in this video we will be talking about level design and going over designing a level. So this is going to be based on some of the principles and techniques that we discussed in our lecture. You might want to review or check out the lecture notes here. So there's a link right there. I've probably posted the recording of the lecture on YouTube, so you could also view that if you want to review. And you can see here I go over a bunch of principles and techniques and different things. There's also a bunch of resources at the bottom. So the things that I discussed, of course, are not an exhaustive list of all of the techniques that you might use. So if you have other ideas or things that you're interested in creating with your game, you might want to look at some of those resources and look at other techniques that you could use as well. But I think there's enough that we cover that you could create a level. So uh, we'll start just by setting up the project. You can use a game that you're already working on or you can download the designer default and use that. And there's a pre-built UI scene in there that has a bunch of stuff already there that you can use. So you can just duplicate that and call it level one or whatever you want to use. And then I'll go through creating a level. I'm going to be creating a 2D platformer level. So these same principles could apply in any different type of game, but the level I'll be designing is going to be 2D platformer using, you know, the physics of a 2D platformer. So just keep that in mind. So I'll go through some of the principles and techniques. You don't have to use everything that I discuss in here. You can choose some of them that are appealing to you, or you might find other techniques and principles that you want to apply that we haven't covered in class. Once we finish our level, we'll do some documentation. So you can take screenshots of the progression of the level, or you might want to take a video of a playthrough of the level. And then you can just explain what you use, what principles and techniques you were thinking about when you made those choices in your level design. So let's get started. So to get started, you can download the designer default if you need a project to work from. If you're already working on a game with some tile maps and some other assets like an obstacle and some rewards, you could also work from there. In the demo, I'll be working with a few different pre made assets like two different obstacles and some different items. So if you don't have those things, but you have other stuff and you want to just keep working on your game, that's fine. You don't need to have an instance of everything that I'll use in the demo, but it's good to do some level design once you've got some stuff to work with. So you might want some tile sets and some rewards and obstacles ready to use. So I'm going to replace the designer default folder that I had previously because there may be some updates in here that I want to use. And then once I've got that, I'm just going to open up Godot. So there's a bunch of pre-built stuff in here that I'm going to work with, including this UI scene, which has the metrics, the game over, and the you win. And so that stuff will make it easier um, to see what's happening in the game. You don't necessarily need this to build a level, especially if you're doing something different with your game than a 2D platformer. But I want these things in here just so I can see what's happening in the game. And it also has a scene manager with the scene manager script and the player and my camera. So it has a lot of stuff built into it that will be useful. So that way I can just focus on what I'm going to put in the scene. So I'm going to duplicate that UI scene and name this level one. So I can always go back to the UI scene and use that as a template if I want to start a new level. So for level one, I'm just going to be adding in platforms and other elements that are already pre-built. And I want to keep things organized. So when I start a new section, I'm going to create a node 2D first. And so for this one, I'll be adding platforms. So I'll call this platforms and then I'll drag it above the player. So the platforms will be under the player. And then I'm going to add in my tile maps in here. So once we add the tile map, we're going to go and load a tile set. You probably have some tile maps created from the first designer lab, so you can use those. And the first thing I want to do, I'm going to name this basic tiles, and I'm going to make sure that the collision layer is set to the platforms layer. So if you're using the default scene, you probably will see these default layers that are part of that scene. If you don't see those, that's okay. You can just use the second square. I go over the layers a bit more in the developer labs. So if you're curious about how those work, I would check out some of the developer labs, but I'll update the layers when necessary in these labs as well. So once I've updated the layer, I also need to update the cell size. So the default cell size for our tile maps is 64 by 64, but we're working with 32 by 32. So I want to make sure that matches. And so once I've got that set up, I'm actually going to duplicate this tile map for my auto tiles so I don't have to set those settings again. 
So I'll just duplicate this, rename it auto tiles, and then select my other tile set, which is the auto tiles. So you don't have to use two tile sets or two tile maps. I'm just using these two to give examples of both the basic tiles and the auto tiles. If you prefer to use one or the other, that's fine. You can pretty much do the same things, but I like using the auto tiles along with the basic tiles because it makes things a little bit faster. And so now I'm ready to get started designing. I'm just going to build a platform to get started. So I'm going to make a nice big platform for my player to land on. You can see as I'm laying out my tiles, I'm using shift and command shift to fill in lines or spaces. So just remember if I hold shift, I can draw a line. And if I hold command plus shift, I can fill in a square area on the grid. So that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to fill in these areas. And then I wanna kind of set up some limits for my camera so I don't have to worry about falling below where the platform goes. And so I'm just gonna, preview this and take a look and see that my player can fall below the bottom of this platform. So what I'll do is open up my player and choose the camera 2D and set the top and bottom limits for the camera. So I'll set the top to negative 512 and the bottom to 512. So that's basically one more height in each direction. And so you can see that way the player can still move up and down. But if I fall off the platform, eventually the camera stops and my player just falls below. So I just want to have that set up so I don't have to worry about creating lots and lots of platforms that go down forever. And I can adjust those if I want my scene to get you know taller or go down farther at any point. And I'm just going to make my player a bit faster to make it easier to test feels a little slow, so maybe this will be better for the game as well. So the next thing I want to do is block off the left side of this platform here. So I want to kind of communicate to the player that they have to go to the right. And this is just one way to do it. There's a lot of different ways you could do this, but I'm just going to make things really simple. I'm just going to make a huge big block over here on the left side. So it should be pretty obvious to the player that they're going to find the level going to the right. And you don't have to go right, that's pretty typical in a platformer, but you could go left, you could go up, you could go down. You can see platformers that use all of the different directions. So you don't have to limit your scene in this way. This is just what I'm doing to give the player a little bit of guidance. One of our principles, just showing the player which direction to go into. And so then from a technical perspective, we wanna make sure that this actually works because you can see if the player runs into the wall, and can't jump above the wall, that's fine. But if we have the wall jump enabled, which I'll do now, then we're gonna need a little bit more coverage. And I do wanna use the wall jump later. Again, you don't have to use this. This is just a choice that I'm making. But since I am using the wall jump, I need to make sure that the player can't get above the wall, which they can do in this case. So I'm gonna extend my wall a little bit higher. So if the player does jump above the wall, then it will stop the player. And so now we've got that going where the player can still go up there, but it doesn't keep following the player. Now I'm just gonna add in an invisible blocker. So this is something you shouldn't use a ton because it's something that the player doesn't see. And so it might be kind of confusing, but if you have an area like this that you don't want the player to access, you can create like a little blocker so they can't move into this space. So to do that, I need a new static body 2D. This is just a basic collider or shape that is just in my scene. And I'm going to rename this blocker. And I'm just going to place this against the wall to prevent the player from kind of breaking the game by going above this wall using the wall jump. So I'll take my blocker and add a collision shape 2D and make that a rectangle. And then I'm just going to move that up. It's a little bit hard to select this right now because my player is on top of it. So I'm just going to lock and click on the deselect for my player. And now I'll be able to move that collision shape. And so I can kind of move that across and I'll just throw this up here and kind of move it across to block the player from getting up the wall. And so now the player should basically bump into this and it doesn't look super realistic, but I think it'll at least give the player the sense that, you know, you can't go any higher than this. So again, this is just a choice I'm making because I want to use the wall jump later. You don't necessarily need to do this if your player can't wall jump or you could make like a ceiling or other things like that. But this is just how I'm showing the player what they should be expecting. So the next thing I'll do is just fill in the right side of this platform. And I'm starting with the basic platforms and creating kind of like a big, nice platform 
that makes the player feel like, okay, I'm landing into this area. I don't, there's no real like challenge to landing on this platform. It's just this big area that I can just land on. So giving the player kind of a nice big space to enter. So I'm gonna draw my second platform now. And before I fill it in, I'm just gonna draw the platform top. And what I wanna do is basically set this at a distance that is easy, but not too short for the player to jump. So I basically just wanna show the player with their first jump about what range is expected for them to jump. So that first jump I think was pretty easy. I think I can move it to the right a little bit and I'll just test that. And the player can still make that pretty easily, but it's a little bit farther. And so I think that will be good to give a player the sense of how far they can jump once they try their first jump. That's a good way of kind of slowly introducing the mechanics in the game to give the player exactly the amount of space they need to make this jump. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put a little wall and then I'm gonna do a little drop. And I'm gonna use this little drop here to kind of create an area that the player will anticipate so they'll be able to see it when they're on the lower end of that platform, but they won't be able to see it when they're on the higher end. So they'll have to be doing a little bit of timing and it's gonna introduce a little bit of the mechanics of how this particular level is gonna work. So we can make that jump. And then this jump, we actually have to do a little wall jump to get over. So the next thing that happens is the player is gonna hit this wall and not be able to get up. And so they'll have to try to do a wall jump to get over that wall. So that way I've kind of given the player a couple examples of what they can do, how far they can jump, and also that they can use a wall jump to get over this type of a wall here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add in a little sign. So I'm continuing with some guidance and I'm using some signposting. So just adding a literal sign. And so I'm not doing a lot of scenery in this example. I'm just kind of focusing on the level components, like the platforms and obstacles and rewards. But I do wanna add a scenery node because that's what this would go in. You may have more scenery in your level depending on what you're going for with your game. So I have this little watch out for snakes sign and I'm just gonna put that at the top of this little part of the platform. And then I'll put a snake at the bottom of the platform so the player will know if I jump over here, there's gonna be some snakes. So I'm doing a little signposting here and a little foreshadowing to let the player know what to expect in the very next part of the level. So now I'm gonna add in my snake. So I'm gonna create an obstacles node and I'll drag this above the player again. I'm dragging all of these above the player because the player is gonna be on top of everything. And I wanna make sure that it's not inside of any of my other nodes. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it in the right place, but you can always move it around if you need to. And so then I'm gonna link a child scene and I'm gonna choose my moving obstacle. So you might have this if you've done the obstacles lab. Um, if you don't have this, you can use the one that's built in or you can just skip this part. But I wanna have this moving obstacle. You can see in my obstacle script, there's a few options there. I'm just gonna use the defaults for this one. So we'll be able to see the snake moving back and forth on the platform before we get there. But once I go up on top of this platform, I can't see the snake anymore. And so this is a little challenge. It's gonna kind of give our player a sense of what to expect in this level as I'm gonna be using these types of jumps and these types of mechanics throughout the level. So they can see the snake at first, but then when they make the jump, they can't actually see the snake. So it's gonna ask the player to use a little bit of timing and to do a little bit of guesswork so that they don't get hit by the snake when they land. So I'm gonna try that out and make sure it's not too hard. And that doesn't look too bad. I can, I can see this pretty easily. So I think I'll stick with that. And let's go back to adding some tiles. So this time I'm gonna switch over to my auto tiles and this will allow me to kind of create tiles more quickly. And so after we get past the snake, I wanna give a little reward. So I'm gonna put a platform here and I'm just gonna put a bunch of apples on there give the player a reward for achieving that first challenge. So we're kind of reinforcing if they made it this far, they're doing well. So let's give them a little reward of these apples. And there's also a visual cue. So we're moving towards something. It's a different color. It's kind of moving around. So that gives the player the sense that they're kind of doing the right thing. So to add in the apples, first I'm gonna create a new child node and make a node 2D and drag this above the player and I'll call this items. And once I have that, I'm gonna 
create an instance of the item scene that I already have in my file system. So I'm gonna to go to instance child scene and type in item to find that. And it's gonna add it to the origin, so I have to go back and find it. So when I'm adding stuff into Godot, I'll have to go back to the origin where it gets added in. And then I'll just drag it to where I want it on this platform. And I realize now I don't have the snapping on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on so it'll be easier to place my objects in the scene. So I'm gonna to go to the toolbar and turn on snapping. And then I'm gonna to go to the menu and click on configure snap. And I'll try 32 by 32 pixels and try moving stuff around. And I think I want a little bit more uh, room to work here. So I'm gonna actually decrease the snap to 16 by 16. That'll make it a little bit easier for me. I'll have more options for where to place stuff so I can put these apples kind of floating above the platform. So once I've got my apple set up, I just want to duplicate it and add another one. So I can right click and click duplicate, or if I wanna do it a little more quickly, which will help with my design process, I can just hit Command D or Control D, and I'll turn on the uh, key command so you can see me doing that. So this is on Mac, I'm just using Command D, but on Windows you would use Control D. And so I can just quickly duplicate those items and drag them over. And I'll be doing a lot of that, just duplicating elements that I wanna repeat. So to make it easy, I just hit Command D, and then I just start drag the apple from where the copy is. And so let's give that a try. And so I died and I realized that I haven't set up the game over scene correctly. So I do need to choose the load level path for that and change that to load level one. So that way, if I die, I can hit start over and go back to the scene I was playing. You can see that I can collect all of those apples. And I just noticed that the number on my metrics is not going up. And I realized I forgot to connect the signal from my item to the scene manager. So since the item wasn't in the scene already, that's not gonna be connected. So we have to make sure to make that connection. So I'm gonna go to my item and go to the node and click on the item collected signal. And that goes to the scene manager, which is what I want, but I wanna change the receiver method. So instead of on item, item collected, it's just on item collected. And once I hit connect, it should go to that part of the code. If you don't see it go straight to that part of the code, there might be an issue there. Let me know, we can go over it. And so now that I've got that set up, rather than doing the same thing with each one of the items I already created, it's gonna be a little faster, just delete the other three apples and then duplicate that item again. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one. And I'm just gonna duplicate it a bunch more times and move it over. And so that was a lot faster than setting up the node each time. And so now I can just keep duplicating that item and the signal will be set up so I don't have to worry about that. So that looks pretty good. That counter is going up now. So we've got that connected. And so that's, that's good news. If you don't have your metrics set up or that's not working for some reason, let me know and we can go over it. But it's also not the end of the world if you don't see your item count going up. You can still build a level even if you don't have the metrics working exactly right. So the next thing I wanna do is just do a little branching and a little risk reward. So I'm gonna present the player with two platforms that they can choose from and then I'm gonna put different things on those platforms. And so they're gonna to have to choose which way to go. And I can actually move my player over if I want to make this a little bit easier so I don't have to keep playing through the whole game. I can move the player back later, but for now I'm just gonna move the player up to where I am in the scene so it'll be easier when I test things. And so I wanna make sure the player can get to both of these platforms because they're pretty close together. So I'm just gonna test that out. And we can see there's not really enough space there. So I'm gonna raise the top platform a little bit. I think that'll make it easier for the player to get to either platform. So they'll be able to choose which platform they wanna try out. So I'm gonna extend these platforms a little bit. And so I'm gonna put a couple different things. So I'll put some snakes on the top platform. So that's a little bit of risk. And then I'm gonna put my apples on the bottom platform. But I wouldn't wanna have the apples just sitting there by themselves. That's a very easy decision, right? If I have the snakes versus apples, why would I go up where the snakes are when I could just go collect those apples. So I'm gonna add in a different type of obstacle. And so this will kind of force the player to make a choice here and also introduce a new obstacle in the scene. 
And so now I'm going to have a few different types of things in here. So I'm going to rename my obstacles snakes to make it easier to know where that is. And then I'm going to rename my items apples because we're going to be adding a couple other things in here. So the next thing I want to add is my obstacle simple, which is just that kind of like vine that I created that has some spikes on it. So that doesn't move. It just sits there. But if the player runs into it, the player is going to get hit. And so I'll create that node 2D and call that vines. And then I'm going to add an instance child scene of the obstacle simple. We can't see that right now because it's going to put it at 0, 0. So let's go back and grab that real quick. So I'm going to grab that and bring it over here. And so I'm going to flank these, this line of apples with a couple new obstacles. So now the player has a real choice. Do I want to go on the top platform and try to jump over these snakes? Or do I want to get those apples, but I have to potentially get hit by this new obstacle? So I think this kind of helps explain a few things that are going on here. Like you might not necessarily think that these sort of vines are obstacles because they just kind of look like flowers and they're not moving or anything. So you might not assume that they're obstacles, but we want the player to know that they're obstacles. And I think intrinsically, they'll know that if I'm giving them two options and one is snakes and the other is apples, that there's probably something more complicated going on here. So again, this is just kind of an example of presenting the player with choices and also using that opportunity to introduce something new into the scene. So once we get past this first challenge, I want to go back and sort of bottleneck to a single platform. So the player makes a choice, and then we're going to go back to one platform where the player just continues going through the level. And here I'll add a life. So I'll introduce my second reward. So you can get apples. You can also get a life. And so the player, if they lose a life to one of the snakes or one of the vines after they go through this section, then they'll be kind of rewarded and say, OK, you made it through this challenge. Here's a life in case you lost one. And if they didn't lose a life, then it will give them the sense that, hey, you got this challenge and you didn't even need the extra life. So you're doing a great job. Of course, the player does have the option to go up and get the snakes and then get the life and then go back and get the apples. So we also have to remember to connect the life to the scene manager to make that actually work with the metrics. So I'm going to click on the life and go to the nodes and go to item collected and just connect that to the scene manager. And remember to change it. It should just be on item collected, just like our apple. And again, if that works, you should see the right function here in the code. If you don't see that green signal set up with the right function, then let me know. We can figure out if there's an issue. All right, so moving on in the next section of the level, I'm going to do some more branching, but it's going to go out in a bit more dramatic fashion here. And so this is going to be kind of the main challenge of the level. I'm going to do two different parts. One is a series of jumps. And so the real challenge here is going to be making a series of more and more difficult jumps. And then in the bottom part of the scene, I'm going to have a bunch of snakes. And I'll include some apples and lives to pick up in both parts of the scene. So it's almost like two different levels. But you can kind of choose, do I want to try you know, doing these hard jumps? Or do I want to try getting through all these snakes? And then there's also some rewards. So you might want to try go back and do both. And I'm also going to make it so that if you fall from the jumps, you're going to land in the area with the snakes. So that means that you will be able to still complete the level, but you'll have a new challenge that you have to complete. So I added a bunch of different platforms at different spacing, and I'm going to just test this now. I want to see that this is possible, but not too difficult. So it should kind of increase with difficulty, but there shouldn't be a part that's just completely impossible. And keep in mind that since you're developing the game, your sense of what is hard or easy might be different than what a player who's never played the game before. I'm not that great of a gamer, so if I can play this level without too much difficulty, I assume that most people will be able to do it too. I think it's a decent amount of difficulty. It could certainly be much more difficult, but for the purpose of the demo, I think this is pretty good. And so now let's add in some vines to make this a little more challenging. I do think it's actually a bit too easy, but we have these obstacles and we can kind of spread them around and just add a little bit more to this challenge. So I'm going to test this again. 
And it's definitely a lot harder. I can't just kind of run right through it. So I kind of have to time my jumps and jump on these edges to avoid the obstacles. I also forgot that one of the things I have is a frame number. So I can actually change the art that shows up for the vine. So to make this a little less monotonous, I'm going to go through and choose some random obstacles and then go over to the script variables and just change the frame number. All this does is change which sprite is used for each one. And so that adds just a little bit of visual variety to this to make it a little less repetitive. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go through and kind of randomly assign some of the obstacles a different frame number. I only have three frames for this vine drawing, so I can only choose zero, one, or two. Um, if you have more, that's great. Or if you have a bunch of different ones, that's cool too. This is just an easy way to kind of use different art with the same basic setup for your obstacle rather than having to create like a whole other scene that behaves mostly the same way. So now let's add the bottom section of the scene. I'm going to use the basic tile style here to kind of give the sense that, you know, there is like a bottom in this world. So again, this is just a kind of a choice I'm making here to give a sense of different spaces in the level. So we kind of have these platforms floating in air. And then we have these larger platforms that are kind of like the ground of this world. Um, so I'm just going to kind of draw these out. And what they'll do is kind of follow along under the top platforms. And then I'll have a little bit of like up and down to have some different parts. And I'm going to kind of space out some of my obstacles in different ways down here. And then I'll have a little bit of a small kind of like pinch down here to kind of add a few different things into one space to do a little layering here in a bit. And then I'll do some steps that kind of lead up to the end of the level. So both of these two options kind of converge on the same space. So this is kind of bottlenecking again, and that leads to the end of the level. And for now, the end of the level is just going to be kind of empty. In another lab, I'll go over how to add some portals or doors that the player can go through to get to another level or potentially win the game. So I'm going to kind of flesh out the end of this scene, and this will be kind of the end area. And so I've got a basic outline of what I want this area to look like. And now I'm just going to fill in some of the little corners and edges and all the kind of empty space at the bottom here. So I'll start by just drawing the walls down to where the player can fall. And then I'll fill in, again, I'm hitting Command and Shift and dragging to fill in this whole space here. And to fill in those lines, I'm doing Shift. So that just makes it a lot faster to kind of fill in these large spaces. And then I'm going to come back and fill in the little details, the little edges in a second. And so I can kind of fill that in. And then if I replace this with other tiles, it'll just replace those tiles. So I'm not too worried about going over anything here. And then I'm just going to use my little corner tiles to fill in those corners in my little steps. And then I have a couple other corners to fill in back here. And I'm almost done with this section. So that's looking pretty good. Let's give that a try. And now I'm seeing that I kind of went below where the camera limit is. And so I'm going to have to extend things a little bit if I want to keep it the way it is. I could kind of move things up, but it doesn't make a huge difference to me if it goes more up or more down. So I'm just going to extend the camera limit so I don't have to kind of move everything around. So I'll change the camera limit to 1024. And so let's just test and make sure that's far enough. And yeah, now we can see that kind of bottom area. And then we also want to just make sure, yeah, so now I can kind of see this gap at the bottom if I go too far down. So we'll just have to extend everything down a little bit, but that won't take too long. So I'm going to go to my walls and just start with those. I'll extend those down from the beginning. Now that I've increased the camera limit on the bottom, I have to go back here in case I fall down off these little edges, then I'm going to see the bottom of my platforms, which isn't necessarily the end of the world. That could be part of the aesthetic of your game. But for me, I want to keep these nice and solid. So I'm just going to extend these walls down and then give it a test. So I can still fall just a little bit below the edge there. Um, so I'm just going to extend them down a little bit more. And that should be enough. So I'll go ahead and do that on the earlier platforms as well. 
So let's give that a try. I'm just going to fall straight down. And now it looks like I get cut off right as the player dies. So that's okay. I probably don't want the player to be cut off like that. For now, I'm just going to move on, but I would probably try to tweak that later. All right, so let's add some snakes into this section and we can move our player over to test this section as well. So I'm just going to put three snakes here and put a few snakes up here, but I'm going to change the snakes up here. I'm going to say activate on player. So what that does is you can see the kind of larger blue area, that collider that goes pretty far beyond the area of the snake. So that area actually just is a trigger to activate the snake once the player gets close to them. And so that'll create a slightly different style with that obstacle. Instead of just starting to move when the scene starts, the snake will actually wait until the player arrives. So it'll give, when we test it out, you'll see it'll give kind of like a little different example of what's possible with these obstacles. So I'm gonna make a few more snakes down here. And then I'm going to put a couple more snakes down in this little area where the player will have to fall into. And that's where I'm also going to add some of my vines. So that's going to be kind of the scary little pit with both vines and snakes layering both of the obstacles together just to give kind of an example of that. Okay, so now we need to add in some rewards so it's not just all obstacles in this area. So let's put some apples in here. I'll put one apple for each snake just to kind of balance things. And I'll put some apples in this area over here. And I'll put some apples on the steps. So I want to basically reward the player each time they achieve some type of challenge. So you don't necessarily have to do it that way. It's a little simplistic. It's almost like, you know, giving a dog a treat for doing something correct. But we do want to kind of just give an example of how to balance obstacles and rewards. So let's put a life in a couple platforms kind of in the middle to give the player something to kind of get back a life if they lost one. And then I'll put some apples on all of the rest of these platforms that don't have anything on them. And maybe we can put one more life up here in case the players hit a bunch of little vines. And let's put an apple in between these two vines. And so now we've kind of fleshed everything out. So there's things for the player to kind of work towards as well as avoid throughout both sections of the level. So let's test this out. I'm going to go through the bottom section first. And so that was pretty easy. Now I get to the snake and I can see it's not moving, but that kind of tells me to be careful. And so when I jump up on the ledge, then it starts to move. So that's kind of a little bit of a different look there. And so now I go down here, I can kind of get past these snakes and then get the apples over here. And then I'll jump down in here. This is supposed to be probably more challenging. It's honestly pretty easy. So if I was trying to make this level more difficult, I would definitely put more stuff in here or do some more variation in here to make it a little more challenging. But for a first level, for the purposes of the demo, I think this is pretty good. So, so let's try out the whole level. I'm going to move the player back to the beginning and give it a try. And since I'm going to be needing some documentation for my Open Lab post, I'm also going to be doing some screenshots. So with a level like this, you might want to do a video that'll kind of give you more stuff to work with. Um, but I'm going to take some screenshots as I go through this playthrough that I can use later in my documentation. So I'll just kind of screenshot the different parts of the level so I can describe what's happening as I go through the level. It's a little bit hard to take screenshots and play at the same time. That's another good reason to take a video, but it's not too bad. So I'm just using Command Shift 4 and then hitting Space on the Mac to get the option to take a photo of the window. But however you want to document is fine. And so I did die here, so I'm going to start over and try it again. And so let's take another screenshot since I got to the next part of this level. And now I'm going up at the top of the level. I'm going to take some more screenshots. And this one is actually pretty challenging now. I don't know if I did this with all of the vines here. So I got 
hit by that fine. And now I slipped off the edge. So actually going up there is pretty challenging. Maybe I should put some more apples up there to make it a little more enticing for the player to try that challenge instead of going the easier route down here. Let's just continue documenting this section. So I'll take a few more screenshots of these different areas. So I'm going to have a lot of screenshots for this one, which is great. You can document a lot of this game. And then I actually died. So let's try this one more time. I'll try to get to the end so I can screenshot the end, but I might have to just move my player over there and start towards the end so I can document that part. Nothing wrong with that. This section is actually pretty hard. I might want to make those platforms a little bit bigger, but it might be nice to have a challenge here. And I missed that one again. So I got stuck down here. So I might have to just move my player and just start from the middle. And I might also want to kind of reconfigure this just a little bit to make it just a little bit easier. So I'll move my player back to this part of the scene. And I just want to try this out again. I don't think it should be that much harder than the rest of the level. So let's give this a try. So I can kind of make it onto here, but it's pretty challenging. So I might adjust these platforms just a little bit. It's good to test these out. We'll do some user testing later in the semester as well so you can get feedback from other users and ultimately you do want feedback from other people to get a good sense of how difficult the game is because you're going to be playing it a lot you're going to be a lot better at it than somebody who's just coming to it without having played it before so we want to make sure to get feedback from other people but playing through it as you're building it and testing it making sure it's you know fun but not too hard is a good thing to do as well so i'm just going to make a few adjustments here Maybe I'll take out some of these vines, make the platforms a little bit wider to give the player some more space. And let's give that a try. I think that'll make it a bit easier to get through here. And it is still hard to kind of get on these edges. So it's still pretty challenging, but I do have a little more space. And so it's a little bit easier. I have to do a little wall jump there. So that's cool. And then I have this little apple at the end. And then I can't see the platform here. So that's kind of a big jump to make without knowing where you're going. So let's add in another platform here. And maybe I'll just kind of mirror that other platform that we had before with the two vines and the apple in the middle. Um, so, you know, a little repetition can be nice. If we're just doing it once, it hopefully won't feel too repetitive can be nice to kind of have a little mirroring in this part of the level. So I'll give that another run through. Obviously I could tweak and add to this forever, but I'm just going to give that one more try and see how it looks and then do a little more documentation. And then I think I'll be ready to move on to the open lab post. So I'll just take a few more screenshots of this part of the level. And I'm going to have a lot of material to post on open lab which should be fun to kind of explain all the choices I made and show off all the different parts of the level. And I think I actually forgot to put my player back in the right place, but that's okay. Uh, don't forget to put your player back at the beginning of the level. So now we can go over to Open Lab and make a new post. So as usual, we'll look for the category. So I'll go to Categories and type in level design and choose the category and put in a title. And so now I'm not gonna go through all of the screenshots cause I did make a ton of them, but I'm just gonna give a few examples of just explaining what is in the screenshot and then adding the screenshot. So I'm just gonna start with, here's the progression of my first level and I'll throw in that first screenshot and just explain so the wall is preventing the player from falling off the left side and kind of tells them to go to the right. And there's a cliff to the right that kind of tells them that they're gonna to have to jump. And so I'm kind of giving some guidance here and introducing some of the basic game mechanics. And so let's just go on to the next screenshot. And so here we see the first jump and it's set at a specific distance to kind of communicate to the player how far they should be able to jump. And I'll mention the wall jump on the next wall and any of the other mechanics that the player is going to run into. And I'll keep going like this throughout the screenshot. So this part may take kind of a while. I'm not going to do all of my screenshots. You can see there's a ton. 
you don't actually have to have as many as I have there. I just took a whole bunch of them so I could have options to choose from later. But you just want to have one screenshot to kind of show each part of the level and explain each one of the mechanics that you use. So I'm going to skip a couple and go to this part and just kind of talk about what's happening in that part of the scene. And let's give that a preview. And that looks pretty good. So again, I'm just doing the first few parts. You should keep going until you have everything that you need in the level. Um, but that should look pretty good. And let's go ahead and publish.